We're on question 95. A certain salesperson whose weekly salary is equal to a fixed base salary plus a commission that is directly proportional to the number of items sold during the week. All right, so let me write this. 95. So the salary is equal to some base plus, plus a commission that is directly proportional to the number of items sold during the week. So let's say the items number of items sold is x x items times I don't know the commission per item. So I'll call that lowercase c. And this is a total commission. Fair enough. Commission. If 50 items are sold this week, what will be the sales salesperson salary for this week? Okay, so they actually told us that there's 50 items. Fair enough. What will be the salesperson's salary this week? So statement number one tells us last week 45 items were sold. So 45 in last week. That alone doesn't tell me much, right? Because I don't know how much he made last week. Statement two. Last week's salary was $405. $405. Well, does this help me still? Last week. Because in order to figure out, what well, we need to figure out, right now we need to know how much of his salary in any given week is base, and how much commission does he get per unit. right? And the only way we could figure that out is if you tell us, so last week we know that he sold 45 items. So for example, last week he made $405. If I use both statements, let me see if I can get anywhere. He made $405 last week, which is equal to his base plus 45 units sold times his commission per unit. So that's all this information gives me. If I actually if I use both statements, that's all it gives me. Right? That 405 is equal to b plus 45 times c. And we need to figure out s is equal to b plus 50c. Right? What is s equal when 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 you sell 50 units. And so we have two linear equations, but we have how many unknowns? We have one unknown, two unknown, three unknowns, sorry, one unknown, two unknown, three unknowns, right? B and C was already there. So we have three unknowns, but only two linear equations, so we don't have enough information to solve it. So the answer is, what is that, E. We, all, all of these statements still do not give us enough information. 96. 96. If Juan had a doctor's appointment on a certain day, was the appointment on a Wednesday? So we want to know, was it on a Wednesday? 1. Exactly 60 hours before the appointment, it was Monday. 60 hours before the appointment, it was Monday. 60 hours before, it was Monday. This is interesting. Okay, so how many uh, 60 hours is 2 days. 2 days is 48 hours. 2 days. It's exactly 2 and a half days, right? 48 and then another 12. So this is equal to 2 and a half days. 2 and a half days before. So this is interesting. If we said if you said that 2 days before it was a Monday, then his appointment had to have been on a Wednesday, right? Because if you pick if you pick any hour in Wednesday and you go exactly forty eight hours ago, it would be that same exact hour on Monday. Right? So if you said forty eight hours ago it was Monday, then you then this would be enough information. But this is two and a half days ago. So for example, if his appointment and you know, it might sound weird, but if his appointment was at uh let's say Thursday Thursday, 1 a.m. And you go two and a half days before. Let's see, if you go two days before, you go to Wednesday, 1 a.m., Tuesday, 1 a.m., and then you go 12 hours before, you would end up at Monday at 1 p.m. Monday at 1 p.m. So I've given a case that meets condition one where his appointment wasn't on Wednesday. It was on Thursday. But of course, I can give a condition where his appointment was on Wednesday. If his appointment was on Wednesday at 10 PM, then if you go one day back, you're at Tuesday, 10 PM. 
I don't know. I'm sure you can't read that. Then you go another day. You're at Monday, 10 p.m. And then you go half a day. You're at Monday, 10 a.m. So statement one does not give us enough information. It's because of this pesky half day. Now let's see what statement two gets us for us. Statement two. The appointment was between 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. 1 p.m. to 9 p.m. Now, this by itself obviously is useless. I mean, you could have an appointment any day between 1 p.m. and 9 p.m. But used in conjunction with each other, it seems like I have enough information. Because let's say the appointment was at 9 p.m. and two days, two and a half days ago, it was a Wednesday. So let, let me see. 9 p.m. Uh, two, sorry, two days ago it was a Monday. So if I have it at Wednesday, 9 p.m. If I go back one day, I'm at Tuesday, 9 p.m. Tuesday, I'm at sorry. One day back, I'm at Tuesday, 9 p.m. Two days back, I'm at Monday, 9 p.m. And then if I go half a day more, I'm at Monday, 9 a.m. Right, and if I take the lower bound, Wednesday at 1 p.m., do the same logic, and you're going to end up at Monday, 1 a.m. So at either end of this range, if I know that if you go two days ago, you end up at Monday, the only day that works is Wednesday. You could try this with Thursday or Tuesday. You won't end up on Monday if you go two and a half days back. So for this problem, both statements are necessary in order to know whether his appointment was on Wednesday. Next problem, 97. What is the value of 5x squared plus 4x minus 1? First they tell us x times x plus 2 is equal to 0. Well, let's see. Can we use this alone? Let's multiply it out. We get x squared plus 4x is equal to 0. And that tells us that x squared is equal to minus 4x. Well, maybe we could substitute this in for 4x, so or for x squared. So we get 5 times x squared. Well, we know that x squared is minus 4x. Minus 4x plus 4x minus 1. That's that's minus 20x plus 4x minus 1. No, it doesn't get us anywhere. Even playing around with the algebra, so we get minus 16x minus 1. So statement by statement 1 by itself, at least as far as I can figure out, does not help us solve this problem. Statement number 2. Statement number 2. x is equal to 0. Well, that's all we need. x is equal to 0, then this is 0, this is 0. And we're just left with negative 1. So this is the only piece of information we need to solve this problem. And statement 1 doesn't really help us much. So only statement 2 is necessary. What is that, b? Next problem, 99. Oh no, 98. 98. At Larry's Auto Supply Store, brand X antifreeze is sold by the gallon. So X by gallon. And brand Y is sold by the quart. Y by the quart. Excluding sales tax, what is the total cost for one gallon of brand X antifreeze? So one of X, one of X, and one quart of brand Y. OK, so we want to know the cost equals how much dollars? So let x be the number of gallons of x, and y be the number of quarts of y. So we'd have to know we'd have to know their prices in order to figure out how much the combination costs. So let's see. At least I think. Statement one: Excluding sales tax, the cost for six gallons of Brand X antifreeze. So six gallons of Brand X antifreeze and ten quarts of y. So plus 10 of y is equal to $58. Well, this, once again, by itself does not help me much. I have two, two unknowns with one linear equation. So I can't solve for what x plus y is equal to. I mean, there's, 
if I could have factored out, if this was 10x plus 10y, I could have factored out a 10, and had, I would have had x plus y right sitting there. So actually, I probably could have solved it if it was that way, but this isn't quite as easy. So statement number two, excluding sales tax, the total cost for four gallons of brand X, four gallons of brand X, plus 12 quarts of brand Y, plus 12 quarts of brand Y is equal to $44. And actually, just to be exact, I've, I, I realize I misspoke something. Let X, let X be the cost, X equals the cost of X antifreeze per gallon, and Y is equal to the cost of Y antifreeze per gallon. And so we want one, so we are still trying to figure out X plus Y, but I just wanted to be exact, because we got six gallons, so the cost would be six times X plus 10 quarts of Y, so it would be 10 times Y to get 58, et cetera, et cetera. But now we have two equations with two unknowns, so it's trivial now to solve for X and Y. This is your algebra one problem. So both equations combined are enough to solve for it, but each independently are not enough, because you can't just factor out a number and just be left with X plus Y here. That could have been a trick if this was a tricky problem, but it's not. Anyway.